video you are about to view is by no means an instructional or a how-to video. This is a video that I am showing you because this is how I did my solar install. I am not a licensed electrician nor am I a professional. So I am adding this disclaimer to say that I will not take responsibility for anything that I did in here. It's totally on me and anything you do will be totally on you. So if you have any questions about anything you're doing, call Battleborn. Um, another vendor that I highly recommend is Arizona uh, Northern Wind and Sun. They are absolutely phenomenal. That's where I bought my Victron equipment from, and they were very helpful when I called them, as was Battleborn. So, um, again, if you have any questions, you can definitely post them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. But, like I said, I am not an expert at this, and I'm not a licensed electrician. So, that being said, here it is. Enjoy the video. Enjoy the video. Well, good morning, YouTube. Uh, today we're going to be talking about doing a new solar install on the Lance 1181. Uh, if you've watched our videos, you have seen that we bought uh, Battleborn batteries before we went to Mexico. And I installed them and dropped them in. The problem was, is that the Lance camper came preloaded with a 100 watt solar panel and a PWM charge controller. <clears throat> so. This was actually in there, and I took it out the same day that I put the um, Battleborn batteries in. I put in a, a Victron 130 um, charge controller to more properly charge the lithium batteries. And amazingly enough, uh, we never had any problems. I never ran the generator in over two months on the road in Mexico to charge the batteries. That's 100 watt panel. Most days we would bring in enough. Uh, power to charge them back up to 100%. Now I know when we go to Alaska that won't be the case and we did not have an onboard inverter. We were actually using a 100 watt uh, cigarette plug lighter adapter um, inverter that we used to charge the cameras and the laptops and you know in all reality that worked okay just was an inconvenience. If we wanted to run the microwave we would have to start the generator and and I'm not a big fan of generators. I would rather not run them if at all possible. Um, so that's why we're going to go with a solar install. Now this will be the fourth RV that I've installed a solar system on. And behind me you can see the momentum. And I actually kind of uh, cobbled together a solar system with that. I bought some used parts. Uh, we do have four 6 volt golf cart batteries, Trojan T105s. And honestly, especially in this big rig, it just wasn't enough. And originally we were thinking about taking this rig to Alaska and I was gonna redo it with Battleborn batteries and, and do all this to it. But then we found this new truck camper that we're very, very comfortable in. So I am going to install all of this equipment. And probably the heart of the whole system will be this Victron Energy Multi-Plus Compact 12 volt, 2000 watt, 80 amp, uh, it's an inverter charger. It's got a transfer switch built into it. Any of you that are familiar with Victron equipment know that it's uh, really, really cool stuff. It's, uh, a lot of it's Bluetooth capable, and my whole system will be Bluetooth capable on this. Um, so this will be the heart of the system. I also bought the uh, BMV 712 Smart Battery Monitor which I probably didn't really need to, well, I did need the shunt, so I bought that. Um, but I wanted to get the color control, especially just to get the auto generator start on it, so that if the batteries ever do get low, especially in storage, that it can start the generator and run that. Um, there's also a lot of other cool features, and we'll probably go into that later on. Of course, there's always cables. I had to buy um, a network cable for it couple of BE direct cables. I've got a temperature sensor for my battery. I bought a battery shutoff switch that I will be mounting. Got a 300 amp fuse here that will be in line to protect the inverter. 
Actually, I am really fond of using circuit breakers to shut off the power to the charge controller. Um, I actually managed a property in my professional life that was totally off grid and we used circuit breakers so that we could shut the power off to the charge controller and shut the battery or the uh, solar input out. So I bought the uh, midnight solar breakers, DC breakers and a baby box. And I'll be using those to isolate the power from the charge controller when need be. Now I bought some 2 watt cable. This is really heavy. Um, it's probably overkill. I probably could have gotten away with 1 watt uh, since my batteries are located down in the compartment on there and the, the charge or the inverter will be right next to it. So, uh, But more is better. <coughs> I bought a nice gland to put on the roof. There's different ways that you can do this, and you've seen people just use uh, die core, cover it up. Some people put plates over the, the cables, but I really wanted to do this more of a professional type um, installation. Bought a couple of bus bars, negative and a positive, where I will bus everything out. I actually ran bus bars in this system on the momentum, and I really liked it, so I'm gonna carry that over to the Lance. I spent, I think I spent $20 on Amazon for these crimpers. They're not probably the best, but um, it's not a hydraulic, but it will work better than hammering it or uh, just using a vise to pinch them. I also am going to hook up my solar panels. This is 8 gauge wire. It's not 10, which they usually supply. I bought some 8 gauge. I just wanted some extra heavy wire. Like I said, I kind of want to overdo this a little bit. So. If you have any questions or comments, that's just <laughs> the shrink wrap, no big deal. Well, some people need to know that. Yeah. I also bought some heat shrink so that all my lugs, which I actually bought a package of lugs, I will heat shrink them and it's nice to have red and black makes it much easier to decide which one's the positive and the negative. One thing I don't like about the Lance is they have a white and a black wire. And which one do you think would be the negative? Well, it's not. The white wire is the negative and the black is the positive. And that's the way they've run. My 2000 Lance was set up like this. The 2012 is set up like that. It's a little bit confusing sometimes. That's good. All right, so when we bought the Lance, this 1181, which is a 2012 model, it was pre-equipped with a solar panel and this PWM charge controller, which is not lithium battery capable. So when I ordered the Battleborn batteries, I went ahead and ordered the Victron Energy MPPT 100-30 charge controller. I'm only going to be using um, 320 watts of solar on the roof, so this will be more than capable for what I'm doing at 12 volts. And it was temporary, that's why it doesn't work. And it's temporary. I, it will not live here. In fact, the color monitor that I showed earlier, this is where the color monitor and the battery monitor are going to be mounted here in this location. Um, this will be actually put down underneath next to the batteries. And it'll look much better. And it will look much better. This just looks kind of scabbed, but I, I got to say that during our trip to Mexico, the thing worked super awesome. We, uh, like I said, we watched TV, we watched movies. We charged all kinds of stuff. Um, we never had any issues with our batteries. It's so nice to not have battery anxiety. And I, you know, have lived in RVs for over 20 years and it's always been an issue. Um, it's great the technology is finally getting to the point where we can live without worrying about it. So, all right. Hello again. So here we are in the 2012 Alliance 1181. And if you remember from the previous scene, I had the Victron charge controller mounted here, and this is the tank monitor and the generator start. And what I wanted to do is I want to mount the CCGX Victron color control right here, and I'm going to move that up. And I actually have a black plexiglass panel you'll see in a later video. But I wanted all the um, data cables to come here, but they have to run from where the equipment is, which is down over under here, under there. 
So I had to figure out a way to route the cables and obviously I didn't want them just out in the open. So what I did was I opened this up and drilled a hole in that compartment, routed the data cables through there. This is where the microwave goes. And then through the pantry, beneath the pantry, is a bank of drawers and there's some heat ducts down there and an air return so I was able to remove the air return but I could not find a cavity that went down underneath the um, floor because there's actually a basement in this model and there's a, actually a storage drawer right down under here so what I ended up doing if you look under the round hole Janelle I'm trying to get it I almost need a... Oh, there's a hole right there. Okay. You can see I drilled a hole in the, under this cabinet bank and I was able to get into the basement. And from there I'll be able to route it across to the battery compartment. And then you went through the floor here. Yeah, so it's under the floor here. And then you went... And if you want... Into the... You can put it on hold. The drawer over here. All right. Oh, they came down through the pantry and then down over here. Okay. And that's where the drawer came out of. positive bus bar hooked up now. Yep. And he's working on the negative one. Yep. Are you having fun yet? No. <laughs> tedious. Because I'm trying to design it as I go. Okay, so I'm going to make my own cables. Um, so I bought some raw cable. This is 2 aught. You always want to make sure you get the right size cable. And it always helps to have the right tools. You know, you might spend a little bit of extra money, but having cable cutters, I bought these quite a while ago when I actually put the uh, surge protector in the fifth wheel here, and it just comes in really handy. It makes it a lot easier than trying to use a big set of dikes. I also purchased a crimper. This isn't the best. The hydraulic ones are much nicer, but this was $20, so it was really affordable. I have two watt lugs, and I also bought some heat shrink. And make sure you get the right size. You can do electrical tape if you like, but I just like heat shrink. It's a real nice clean job, and it's a little bit thicker than tape. <clears throat> so the first thing I do is take my lug. And you'll see it's got a hole in it. And I take my cable and I want to make sure that the wire goes all the way into the very end of this. So I just do a little bit of eyeballing to see where I want to make a cut. So I'm going to do it about right there. That's probably about a little less than an inch, I'm guessing. So take, make sure you have a nice sharp knife. And I just push it in. I can feel it hit the copper. You don't want to cut into the copper strands. From what I understand, most of the electricity flows through the outer sides of the, the copper, but you can see there's a little bit of a paper type insulation in there. You want to make sure you get that out also. <clears throat> pull that off, and I usually try to twist this up because I find that once you pull the insulation off, <coughs> once you pull the insulation off, the top flares out a little bit. So, 
what I want to do is make sure that every single strand goes inside of the lug. And then I push it down as far as I can. And having a little bit of exposed there, that isn't going to hurt anything. I prefer to have it a little bit closer, but this way I know that it's pushed all the way into the very end, so it's got maximum contact. <clears throat> now on my crimper, there's actually a whole bunch of different settings. This is a universal. It can do from, let me see what it says. It says from 10 all the way to 2 odd. And so it tells you what number of die to use. So I have it set to the proper die, open it up wide, I slide it in over the top, and then sometimes this is better if you have another person or a helper. But I can do this on this table. So I put it down, just get it tight, push that in as far as I can, and then I just go ahead and crimp it. And it closes all the way, just like that. So then, you open it up. And there's my crimp. Now it's not the prettiest. A hydraulic one would do a much nicer job, but it's sufficient. And then I take my heat shrink, slide it over the top, just like that, so it covers up everything. I have a heat gun. You can use a lighter if you want. I just obviously I use a heat gun for a lot of different things. And once it gets hot, it starts to shrink. And you can see it shrinking on there. And just go around. You don't want to melt it, but you want to get it good and hot and shrunk all the way around. And make sure you don't touch it because it's going to be hot. So let it cool off a little bit. So that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Are you watching, Dad? Huh? You watching them work? You want to get me cutting this with this. Is it dinner time? I think it's dinner time, huh? I drilled a new hole to run these thick 2 watt battery cables through, and that's what I'm doing here is pulling it through. And uh, pulling it through, I pre-measured, cut it off just so it was just long enough to be able to hook up, and I wanted to put that loop in there. Um, but you can see it here hooked up to the terminal on the inverter. And there's another hole. You can see a hole there above the um, transfer switch. Here's both the cables hooked up. You can see the baby box, the charge controller, all on this panel underneath the, actually it's not in the slide out, it's in the wing of the uh, truck camper. Now this truck camper came with a tray, which, you know, it looks cool at first glance, but for these batteries, which need no maintenance, the Battleborns, it's kind of, uh, you know, neither here nor there. I could do without it, but for the time being, that was what was working. So I made it work. This is the transfer switch. And what I did was I ran the outgoing power from the transfer switch to the Victron Multi Plus Compact. Then the output from the Victron actually is the output back to the coach. So the transfer switch, the shore power, and the generator still run through that. The outgoing power out of the transfer switch comes into the Victron. And then the Victron, I actually had to put a junction box back there and you can't see it because it's just too tight. But that's where I wired in the old out from the transfer, and so the Victron power goes to the output into the coach. 
So no matter what, the Victron is the last leg of this electrical system. Is it dinner time? You got a couple hours to go yet. Maybe I'll give it to you at 4 or 4.30. How about that? Does that sound okay? No? You want it now? <laughs> He's running around here like he wants it now. <laughs> Feeding him a little snack. Wires everywhere. He's getting everything put together. There we go. Okay. Okay, so since the Victron Multi Plus Compact has a battery charger built into it, I need to disconnect the battery charger for, our, for the camper, which is in here and every camper has it. these are all in different places but this is your fuses for your 12 volt side and your circuit breakers for your um, shore power and so that just snaps off and right here is the battery charger for the house batteries on the truck camper and they were literally you can see the wires already done this, but they were literally hooked up to these bus bars, which are wired through the circuit breakers here. So I just disconnected. There's the neutrals. I even took the ground off. Probably could have left that on, but disconnected those. And then I also disconnected the wires that went from the charger to the battery. And this is, these are the wires that are coming in from the battery to power the 12 volt side. And these are the lugs that were where the wires went from the charger to charge the batteries. And I disconnected those also. But it's gonna stay here on board so that if and when we sell this truck camper, I will, you know, if somebody gives me enough money, I'll leave all that Victron stuff on there. But. For those of you that don't know, there's probably $4,000 worth of Victron equipment. Well, maybe even $5,000 with the batteries. So, but that's it. And I know we'll be saving electricity, but not that much in dollar value. It's more of a convenience in being able to... For boondock. boondocking. All right. Yeah, I'm not really worried about money saving is it's for convenience while boondocking so we don't have to run the generator because we are not fans of running the generator in fact not kinda, everybody can afford that so i mean right. there's, there's smaller setup versions too that they can do something smaller well like on the momentum you know i made a solar system on that for about a thousand dollars but it's not nearly as convenient as this. I kind of put it together with bargain pieces that I bought here and there and put it all together where this is all Victron equipment, all um, controlled by the color charge um, control box CG up there. So. so the older you get, the easier you want it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except the install. All right, so I'm putting it back together. And uh, I did run into a problem, unfortunately, the data cable from the color control down to the inverter was bad. And I fussed around with that <clears throat> for a couple hours and then I just decided that uh, it was the data cable. So I went and bought a new one, hooked it up, ran it out through the door and just took it direct and sure enough that's what it was. So. Spent another couple of hours having to reroute the cable again. Through here. Yeah. Took the microwave out. Went through down the, pantry, the pantry, through there. All the way down here. Where we showed the cable before. Down through the lawn and then out through the yeah. outside. <clears throat> so, right now we are on solar power and the microwave works. I've run the refrigerator on DC for a little bit just to see what it did and I think it's cold enough where it didn't even kick on but uh, ran the microwave everything works so 
real happy. Battleborn batteries are awesome. <laughs> and they're fully charged. <clears throat> I had it plugged in overnight so the uh, Victron charger was charging that out. And I also ended up buying um, from Battleborn one of their battery isolators. This Lance Camper came with a battery isolator, but obviously it wasn't for a um, lithium battery setup. And so I'm going to have to call them because I'm not quite sure about the signal and the ignition. I get the ground and these two connections I get, but I going to have to call them because my truck is set up so that when the ignition is shut off it will not send power from the um, truck batteries back to the truck camper so I'll have to figure out how to do that and when I do that we'll do a video on that and then you got these numbered too how yeah organize it? so I numbered all of these wires they actually came off of the factory installed battery monitor, the tank monitor, which we all know these are fairly worthless, but I'm going to put it back on. Then this actually is for the generator startup. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire the generator into here so it will start automatically. But since this has an hour meter on it, I'm going to want to keep that um, connected also. So I'll probably just figure out how to run some jumpers from that switch to the then you got Victron. But everything's numbered one. I started left to right. Pretty straightforward. Can you show the numbers? So you can show people what you're talking about. Yeah, I numbered them. So that's the very first connection, which actually goes on these switches. So left to right. So that's number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on. So that would be one, two, two three, three, four, five, five, six. And then I had to cut those wires and I'll have to splice those back together. And that's just for the DSI ignition light for the hot water heater. So that's just a sample of how you got organized, make sure everything's yeah. correct. And I did that also with the generator wires. They actually, so it's seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got some connections there too. And it'll look much better once everything's in. <laughs> yeah. This is the finished product of the monitoring panel. The CCGX, the BMV 712, and the two Lance factory uh, battery monitor, black tank, fresh tank, gray tank, and the generator start-stop hour meter. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, ideally, I might have liked to have a cabinet door over it, but for now, it will work fine. Picture, he made this black thing that put everything on. And it looks really nice. And then I'm going to have to get close. This shows all the readings of the uh, inverter and the charging and everything. So we're going to show you what the power consumption is. The microwave will take 1,256 watts. The refrigerator on AC takes 290 watts. On DC, the refrigerator will consume 234 watts. The uh, Instapot will take 663 watts. And that's just while it's on the pressure side of it. Once it uh, gets up to pressure and temperature, it shuts down. The hair dryer is 796 watts. The curling iron takes only 89 watts, which kind of surprises me. I would have thought it would take more than that, because that thing will get hot. The uh, curlers are 97 watts. The air conditioner, now this is where it gobbles down some electricity. And it takes, uh, you know, anywhere from 975, sometimes when it spikes, a little more than that. So when we're connected to shore power or generator power, I put it in the charger only mode, then it lets the electricity from the generator or shore power flow right through and we get everything powered by shore power or generator power. And as you can see here, right now I'm on shore power. So I've got 338 watts coming in from the shore. 
I've got loads of 266. And my battery, because there's an onboard battery charger on the Multi Plus, it's 100%, which is way cool. Um, other than that, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Remember to hit the bell so you get notifications of when we do uh, the next videos. And like us on uh, Facebook, and we're also on Instagram. So thanks for uh, being here. We're living the dream. In about 30 days, we'll be heading out to Alaska.